What's up, YouTube? Ryan Panny here. Hope you guys are doing reasonably well. Time for year-end list number two, songs that defined the year. And this is definitely the most fun list to make by far. It's also uh, probably the most emotionally driven list for me to make because it's essentially me reflecting on my personal soundtrack for 2019. The soundtrack to which all of my memories of what happened to me this year, good and bad, is inextricably linked. And this type of feelings-driven content is some of my favorite to make. But it's also some of the most challenging too, because how the hell do you articulate the emotions that these songs inspire in you that are really specific to your life and your personal situation, you know? I guess you just do the best you can. You just do the best you can, and you tie in, of course, the larger cultural and musical landscape when you can. And look, I could also be masochistic here and talk about all the songs that define 2019 in a bad way for me, the songs that Unfortunately, I can't unhear and, and I can't reverse being subjected to over and over and over again the entire year. A bunch of dumb Ed Sheeran songs, the Billie Eilish song, Bad Guy, Someone You Loved, a bunch of sappy ballads that were kind of like that. By far the fucking worst, which was that Lizzo song. So I can talk about all that too, but we're keeping shit positive. The one song before we get started that I will include here as an honorable mention is Taylor Swift's The Man, which I mostly just wanted to poke fun at Taylor for so shamelessly cashing in on feminism despite like vocally disassociating herself from it early in her career. And if that general concept of the commodification of feminism by pop stars like Taylor Swift is at all of interest to you, I highly recommend, there's a great book by Andy Zeezer called We Were Feminists Once, which actually mentions Taylor a couple times. But if I'm being real with myself, I really love that song. It's really great, but I only listen to it like we're on repeat for like, like a month or two after Lover came out and then I haven't really returned to it since. So it would have been just like an excuse to make fun of Taylor Swift and that's not what this list is. So anyway, here are the actual picks, ranked 10 to one the 10 songs that defined 2019 for me. At number 10, Mannequin Pussy with Drunk 2, included here just because of the sheer amount I listened to it this year. Oh my God. What a tuneful and well-written and enduring song that I love just as much now as when I first heard it. The cutting lyrics here about a self-destructive lifestyle are compelling as well. And I guess if we're gonna talk big picture here, this song for me sums up a year in which I probably spent the most time exploring various shades of alternative and indie and shoegaze music than anything else. And my love for this new Mannequin Pussy record and also the Cigarettes After Sex record are kind of the culmination of that. Number nine, every year there's a song that comes out that can make me cry on command. A couple of years ago, it was that Paramore song, 26. Uh, last year it was probably Violent Crimes by Kanye. This year it's a metal song, believe it or not. I don't think I've ever included a metal song in this list, but Periphery, It's Only Smiles. My go-to listen this year for when I needed a quick catharsis. It's mostly just that breathtakingly dramatic chorus about loss and longing and soaring through those difficult emotions and that massive final chorus in particular with the double bass and the layered vocals. It just feels so catastrophic and destitute it just gets me every time and the funny thing about this song is all the the techie and noodly musicianship that goes on in between these hooks it does nothing to tame the emotions of the song and number eight one more from the general realm of heavy music this year and that would be bring me the horizon with their scathing cultural commentary heavy metal in which frontman ollie sykes goes on this just wonderfully bitter and sarcastic tirade against fans who hated on them for switching up their sound to something more melodic. I just could not get enough of the song, especially when it first came out. The lyric writing is fucking genius. I've always taken that one line, I keep picking pedals, I'm afraid you don't love me anymore, as just totally sarcastic and fuck you, because the very next line is, because some kid on the gram in a Black Dahlia tank says it ain't heavy metal, which is just the most facetious and dismissive portrayal of what a critical fan looks like to Ollie. So the fact that he's afraid that he doesn't love him, it almost feels like a, just a sarcastic middle finger. I don't know if I'm actually right about that. I think one of two things is happening in the song. Either Sykes is genuinely hurt and, and sensitive to the massive backlash that the band has gotten, despite their success, or I like my interpretation better, this is just one big facetious fuck you and just proof they actually don't care at all. That's why the, the portrayal, again, of what a critical fan looks like is so, so trivializing. Or maybe it's a little bit of both of those things. It probably is. And why this song is actually very significant in the larger rock landscape of 2019 is that to me, for rock and metal bands, the idea of selling out is not nearly as big of a deal as it once was. 
Like there was a time not too long ago that I remember in the mid 2000s where for a metal band, one note of clean singing on a record could be a fucking death sentence. And it's just not that way anymore. The, the parameters of this genre are not as rigid as they used to be. And we partially have bands like Bring Me the Horizon and definitely before them Avenged Sevenfold to thank for that. These are bands that broke through that melodic glass ceiling in the rock and metal world and retained their integrity and got a lot bigger and had a lot larger of an impact on the movement as a whole as a result of doing so. I just don't think that as we close out the 2010s here, rock and metal fans are nearly as close-minded as they were 15, 20 years ago. And I'm not the biggest fan, but I truly think that Bring Me the Horizon deserves some credit for shifting that conversation and, and taking a lot of heat for it in the process. Post Malone, Goodbyes, super significant song for me because it was, besides Circles actually, also by Posty, the only top 40 song of 2019 that I could stand. And in particular, there was this one period in the summer when I had to get my car stereo fixed and I was stuck with the radio, like the radio radio for two or three weeks. And it was absolute fucking torture trying to decide between absolute silence and Lizzo and Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber. Like those are my choices. And anytime goodbyes came on, I could finally just take a deep breath because I loved it. I love the melodies, very strong melodies in the song, great production, and the young thug feature who I would never have imagined him on this beat. He's so perfect and so quirky and adds so much color to the song. Madeon with All My Friends, the lead pre-album single to his new record Good Faith, which dropped a couple months ago. It has been four years, four years, since Madeon's debut Adventure came out, which was in my top 10 albums of 2015. Totally reignited my interest in dance music at the time. And here we are, it's the beginning of summer 2019. Madeon finally comes back and he's totally reinvented himself in a truly beautiful way. He's taken center stage on vocals, at this point. His grooves are a lot more mid-tempo and bouncier, and this is just a perfect song. This was my song of the summer. Number five, I have to give to Mr. Kanye West, Close on Sundays, which inspired probably the best meme of the year. And even though it's not a great song, it perfectly captures how Kanye's new album, Jesus is King, again challenged and shifted the hip hop conversation. I mean, for God's sake, ideologically, Kanye is going up against everything prominent in hip hop culture. At this point, he's, he's talking in interviews about being pro-life and th this little ditty is about prioritizing family and spirituality and purity. And my personal favorite line is about disconnecting from social media. Again, like I said in my favorite songs of Q4 video, I don't think Jesus King will ever get a second look from fans like 808s did, but I hope that at least in due time, it's looked back on as a culturally significant hip hop release, which it really is. Number four, of course, this one had to be included. I was, <laughs> I was never gonna get away with avoiding it. Lil Nas X's Old Town Road, total chart dominance here with this sort of novelty song. Not that country rap itself by any means is a novelty, just ask someone like Yellow Wolf or before him, a group like Nappy Roots, but the idea of like a SoundCloud generation rapper making this, almost troll-like country crossover, that's a novelty. Lil Nas X, I gotta be honest, I'm totally rooting for this guy. I'm not necessarily rooting for everyone in this new generation of rappers. Garbage people like Takashi 69 come to mind. I'd be really psyched if I never had to hear from Lil Pump again. But Lil Nas X, I really like him. I, I wanna see him keep winning. He's actually made some pretty decent music on the back end of this single. And to be perfectly clear, this song is effectively number one on this list if I was doing this list based on anything other than just like my personal taste. At number three, and, and now this top three are by far my most listened to songs. Like it's not even close, especially this one, which is Khalid's 100. I can't explain exactly why the song connected with me so deeply, but it did. Obviously, sonically, I can point out great things like the amazing sounding snare drum. I love Khalid's vocal melodies. The clean guitar in this song just sounds fucking awesome. But beyond that, I guess this song had several emotional purposes for me that it served. I guess first off, the idea of keeping it moving because you're too busy for all the bullshit, I find that motivating. I think that's the headset that we all always wanna be in. I find Khalid's portrayal of the fakeness and insincerity around him to be incredibly compelling. And I also just love the, the bitter, downtrodden cynicism with which this song is written and delivered. It's just a really relatable snapshot of, of a young star going through some serious growing pains. Number two, the great Dizzy Wright with Self Love is Powerful. And damn right it is. Watching this guy's maturation from sort of a party rapper to delivering this type of, of spiritual and existential music is just so incredibly rewarding. Self love, man, you can't do shit without it. You truly cannot love anybody until you love yourself. And when Dizzy says on the song, self-love is powerful, I heard it's the only way, the only way, take that shit literally. 
love yourself. And just hearing this kind of wonderful message on the opening track of a hip hop album this year was just amazing. And finally, rounding out this top trio of songs here is Tame Impala's Patient single, released this spring. Not to be dramatic, but until my dying day, I will always vividly associate Patience with spring 2019. I was just, I was going through some heavy personal shit at the time. I was really getting to meditation, but every morning, no matter what, I would wake up, I'd roll over, and the first thing I would do in the morning was listen to Patience, just to kind of take a deep breath and get my head into the right space. It's how I woke up every morning, and spring is only, what, seven, eight months ago now, and I already feel this like intense nostalgia when I listen to Patience, just because, so much was changing for me. I had a new job at the time. I had this new outlook on life. I had these new habits that I was working really hard on trying to form. And Patience was the, the beautiful soundtrack to all of that, all of that growth. And so it'll always be a really special song for me. And there you have it, guys, the 10 songs that defined 2019 for me. For the rest of my life, anytime someone mentions 2019 as a year, these will inevitably be the 10 songs that spring to mind. And I'm not mad at that. And finally, rounding out the year will be top 10 metal albums and top 10 non-metal albums. Stay tuned. And as always, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video and are not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so by clicking right over here, as well as checking out any of the other music-related content that I publish here on a weekly basis. I really appreciate you watching, liking, disliking, commenting, just engaging in any fashion. Twitter, Instagram handle, at Ryan Music. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.